It's been a day of grief and anger in Gaza. Dozens of people gunned down in yesterday's violence were laid to rest. Little wonder then that feelings across the narrow coastal strip have been so somber. The mood has been um, extremely sad. There have been a lot of funerals today. Um, a lot of people just saying goodbye to their loved ones. Um, in my neighborhood, there have been funerals yesterday, actually, right after or during the protests. Uh, three funerals passed by my house. There were clashes today also, but at a much lower intensity. The mosques had not appealed for demonstrations, and people who did turn out faced tear gas dropped by Israeli drones. If they choose to send people forward to try to dismantle the fence or to attack Israeli troops, then the immediate consequence are that we continue to defend ourselves and then there are casualties on the other side. How to contain this violence? There were calls today, not least in London, for an international inquiry into yesterday's events. There is an urgent need to establish the facts of what happened yesterday through an independent and transparent investigation, including why such a volume of live fire was used and what role Hamas played in events. But when Gaza was debated in the UN Security Council this afternoon, the American ambassador defended Israel to the hilt. I asked my colleagues here in the Security Council, who among us would accept this type of activity on your border? No one would. No country in this chamber would act with more restraint than Israel. And then she walked out when the Palestinian ambassador was speaking. Well, I have to say that uh, uh, Trump uh, has sent his uh, envoy. His uh, son-in-law came about 18 times with his um, envoy uh, Greenblatt. Uh, to see the Palestinian leadership, there were constructive discussions. They were emphasizing that Trump will not stand idle. He will come forward with a plan. Instead, they have received a shocking move to uh, relocate the American embassy. They have seen a total denial and more and more speeches at the UN where the Palestinians' rights were totally ignored. Yesterday's embassy opening provoked a deep chill with the Palestinians. They've tonight recalled their representative in the US in protest. President Trump, though, has implied there could be a quid pro quo for the embassy move. Siding with Israel, especially on these two very crucial issues, the JCPOA, the Iran deal most of all, um, also can give cachet to the American administration. After all, if you think of the peace process, it's Israel that's being asked to make concessions in a sense or to give back territory and take some risks. And usually the American position has been, therefore we have to stand by Israel and make sure the Israelis are willing to take that risk. The Trump administration can credibly say that more than anyone recently at least, they are able to uh, convey to the Israelis that they have their back if they were to ask something of the Israelis. The blockade, the deaths and the war of words are all facets of the current diplomatic stalemate. And after so many false dawns, it would take visionary leadership to revive hope in negotiations right now.